Now, another thing I want to reach to you is that during the unbelievable part, I was involved in building another base onto in inside of Dulce, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. It's a biological laboratory on the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa. Uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles, hollowed out underground. Then to the southwest of that, we built, we were, we were in the process of the early stages of building. We drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. A uh, number of the early, at that time, a number of the original uh, uh, wells or dr uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were were um, uh, at the rate of up two miles a day. It was fairly rapid. The equipment kept coming up broken, so we wanted to go down. We wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer or human observers in this case, to find out what was going on. Well, to our total surprise, first of all, the government knew all about it. They didn't tell anybody. Uh, when I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people encamped inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up, the gig was up. First of all, I knew all about the alien agenda. I'll explain that in a few minutes. The large alien greys had been encamped there for as best as believed possible about four or five hundred years. It had been one of their internal bases. And we'd, we'd drilled holes right on top of it. All the stinking air, all the black sooty air came right out as soon as one the first hole was sunk and all this soot came up and well that's when it all all the hell broke loose really, all it started. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it took about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build a underground base, you drill four basic holes and then you build you call stopes or cross member holes across and then you bla use blasting equipment, you know, special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation and you literally blast out or tunnel out or, or deflagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. Well, in this process I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven foot tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. Uh, the person was at, or the entity was absolutely horrible. I didn't waste any time. I reached for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the fold or all of one of these big submachine guns that all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the, all the uh, outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried a little Walter PPK pistol with a nine-shot clip. This is in late August of 1979. Now, you got a regular suit of clothes. You got a regular clothes on. Plus, you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment, and you're reaching for a gun. It's it's not the easiest thing to do, and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting. And I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal, and they do die. However. In the process, uh, one of them did this. I rem all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest, and the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. And every uh, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me, and it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me. Uh, completely crispy crittered my left foot, burnt the shoe right off of me. Um, all I remember is the smoking remains, and I'm laying almost, I'm still conscious, but in and out of, I didn't remember much. And there was a, a Green Beret that was right behind me that risked his life. In fact, he died. But he risked his life. He shoved me back in the basket and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents, Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied 
did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm d talking dead serious. It's been going on since that time. Since late August of 1979, our military, the Russian military, basically the militaries of the world, have been in constant conflict with the outer space alien. The, the small gray, the large gray, the reptilians, the whole thing. There are, 11, there are 11 distinct races of aliens. Two are benevolent. One had to leave here in a hurry because their world is under attack, both on the surface of all the underground there, the Pleiadesians. They're familiar, maybe some of you are familiar with that. Uh, would some of you raise your hands who've heard of Billy Meyer and uh, some of the, uh, well, very good, about half the group. Well, Billy Meyer is one of these lucky people that they figured, well, he's kind of a simple type. We'll show him everything. Well, these are the benevolent aliens, and they've been here helping us. In fact, I picture, I have a picture. Let me reach for it here. I have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. There's my father in the background. 